The fields of health and medicine have really many stakeholders, you know, governments, academia, industry. Which area of cooperation is the most urgent at the moment? And which aspect of cooperation do you think will show the most immediate results? Okay, that's a good question. You know, globally, data sharing is the most urgent issue at this moment. And its results should also be the most immediate. Since the finish of the Human Genome Project, all the scientists have declared that the human genome data should belong to all of the mankind, all the human beings. They should be owned by all, done by all, and shared by all. You know, in biology, there are only one kind of human. So human beings are a true community when it comes to share genomic data. How can advances in the medical and biotech fields help mankind's response to the next public health crisis? We can take a look at what has resulted from the COVID pandemic, COVID-19. First of all, uh, I think our understanding of virus and the infectious disease has greatly improved. Second, mRNA vaccine were very, very quickly put to use. This proof that we can finally able to develop the vaccines at the same time as the virus mutates. The third, I think the speed of developing anti-COVID drugs was also very fast. For example, the Paxlovid from Pfizer, which made a splash during the COVID, actually used the AI-assisted drug design. Finally, I want to say that in the face of any future public health crisis, for example, the monkeypox. We should respect the science and the seeking truth from the facts are very, very important. Dr. Yin, you've had the privilege of leading your team in the launch of a number of rare disease programs. What are the biggest challenges you currently face with rare disease research? There are a lot of things. First, I think there is a lack of awareness. Most people have the wrong ideas. The name Rare disease gave the first impression that it's rare, but there are actually, you know, over 8,000 types of rare diseases. Therefore, even if the incidence of one disease is, for example, one in 100,000, it means in large population countries, such as China, maybe India, with each country population over 1.4 billion, that means about 14,000 people could have one disease. Multiply that by 8,000, uh, so the result, it exceeds 100 million people. With a conservative estimate, the number of people with rare disease in China is not less than 20 million. It's really a huge base. Second, there can be misunderstanding. Some people think that if there are no rare disease in their family history, they will not get them either. In fact, rare disease can be carried by any normal person because no one has a perfect genome. For me, I personally carry seven serious defect genes. The important thing is my wife cannot carry the same mutations, the same defects. Otherwise, our offspring will have a high probability of carrying the defects. This is why pre-pregnancy and pregnant examination are very important. Last but not least, I think the cost of treatment of the therapy is very, very high. It's very, very expensive at the present. For example, in the past two years, some gene therapy drugs for rare diseases have been approved by FDA, but the cost as much as at least two to four million US dollars. So for most people, prevention is still the best options. We always said one ounce of prevention equal to one pound of cure.